And, um, but yeah, what I'm going to be working on is sort of killing two birds with one stone, um, teaching American computer games of the 80s again in the fall. Uh, and I'm going to be on Canaan Rinse's Amiga console special podcast at the end of the month. So why not focus on playing a bunch of Amiga games this month, uh, which I kind of need to anyway. Um, so, but I'm going to cheat. Well, not cheat at, at all. Uh, but the game I'm going to play first, I should really be sticking to the games that I'm sure are going to be key games. Uh, but I really like this game, Hex, uh, that I've played for five minutes in the last 25 years. Uh, it is a game that I played as a teen. Um, there it is. Uh, where did I put this? Oh, yeah. Well, this one's all screwy because it's both class 9 and class 12. Um, all right, here we go. So, well, first, I'll open up the manual here. Uh, that cover actually gives you a pretty good sense uh, of what's going to be going on. Well, sort of. It looks like it's going to be Qbert. Uh, I promise you it is. I mean, not that Qbert. Qbert is a key game. I need to play more Qbert. Uh, but this is a turn based game, this is not an arcade game. Um, it involves turning all the things to your color while the enemies try to turn it to their color. Uh, but what changes it up a lot is that as you progress, there, you know, there's different levels um, with different enemies that behave differently, and you get spells. Um, as you can see here, Hex is quite possibly the most challenging strategy game you have ever played on or off a computer. It's a big, big claim. Uh, I don't think it lives up to it, but... It's a charmer, uh, and it's a, uh, because it involves, it's very board gamey, but, like, some of the spells involve random effects, and in, you know, I could tie it in, it, this would be, if, if I did make this a key game, it'd be, like, one of the little five-minute interstitial, uh, key games, not one of the, uh, ten-pole key games, um, but definitely the kind of game that I could tie it into, you know, Hearthstone, etc., like, just, using this sort of board game with digital things that you could do in a board game like have a random card uh but that would be insufferably tedious um and um yeah following how these things uh get flipped um but yeah using digital affordances in this sort of turn-based game that feels uh yeah like a board game but also again you get these different opponents so there's something a little shuffle pucky about it uh that I recall enjoying. It is a game that I don't think I ever bought because it was a little, I, I liked it, but I don't think I liked it like $40 worth, but it was at Software Station, the store in the Rockaway, New Jersey mall, uh, that I worked at when I was like 15, my first real job in the sense of a job where they keep track of you for tax purposes. Uh, I made, I think, three thirty-five an hour plus 2% commission uh, which means that I made, I think, 20 bucks when I sold a $1,000 Amiga. Uh, that was my biggest score. And I felt a little guilty for it cause, uh, for a year or two afterwards because, you know, maybe DOS would have been the wiser choice of these people. But in retrospect, no, they, they had a marvelous experience. Uh, it all worked itself out. Anything would have been obsolete in a couple of years anyway. Um, and maybe, you know, someone who played with it had, had a life-changing Amiga experience. I wouldn't say I ever had a life-changing one, but I do like the thing. Um, but yeah, this was a game that I would continually borrow because uh, I could borrow games over the weekend as long as I kept them in perfect shape and then shrink wrap them again uh, when I brought them back. So I definitely remember borrowing this one a few times. Um, that was also a reason I kind of turned away from Nintendo because we did carry Nintendo games, but I, that policy did not hold because they had seals on them. Um, anyway, so here's a bunch of things about the different sorts of spells, um, you know, and right, you have like, you have a whole new you, you have a phantom partner who will try to help you. So those are very computer gamey kind of things. Um, and then, uh, you've got all, you've got Egbert here. Uh, he sounds fun. Um, you've got, yeah, I don't remember what the, if the, do they really have different personalities? I mean, you know, maybe it just seems that way because they're different uh, looking characters. They might have different spells. 
um, or different powers. Um, one would assume they're not just. Uh, uh, I like this. Uh, <laughs> very nearly a god <laughs> created the hex arena. It's familiar with all its intricacies. The only reason the other players are willing to enter the arena with it is it puts very little of its attention and well into the game. So right, basically, if you beat the final boss, he just he wasn't even paying attention. Uh, that's a nice trope. There's kind of a variant on the Oratorius. Um, all right. So let's get those hearts going in chat. Let's get this Amiga emulator open. Um, da, 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 da. All right. I downloaded an updated version. I'm updating all my uh, delightful emulation software part of the part of the summer project all right hopefully this kept all of my rom files where they are and all that jazz because oh boy um all right you're still not letting me drag things uh uae is still mm, you know it, it does the job it's definitely clunkier than uh, some of the other ones all right um, let's see, I think I have two separate, yeah, this is the more cleaned up one, but also where I tucked this, okay, there we are, please work, looking good, I uh, hear those beautiful music sounds, yeah, and like, to actually stuff you, like you have to hit f12 it doesn't really tell you that anywhere and it locks your mouse in otherwise so if you don't know that it can it can be panic inducing all right looks like we're doing good uh so let's just full screen this a mind-boggling graphic strategy game all right um so yeah i played about five minutes of this a few days ago uh i just remembered it randomly it was it uh, see, you can see I got to level five. Um, I don't think I lost. I think I just gave up. Um, we can watch a demo game. Uh, we can look at the rules. Well, let's... Okay. Yeah, I turned the thing green. Okay, this is harder to read, actually. And, and we already get the gist. Uh, but right, one key thing is they do lock together. It's a very clever design. I do remember appreciating that. I could go to my save game, but I might as well... Uh, I don't remember. Um... Anyone have any suggestions? Uh, East Smedley, in honor of my f high school friend Jesse's perennial D&D character name. Um, don't know why, I don't know if you knew about Smedley Butler, I don't know, but you know, anyway. Um, so here I am, I'm a unicorn, so this is level one, um, and it's very nice, because uh, there is no enemy uh, good game design for 1985. Oh, right. This is put out, by the way, by Mark of the Unicorn, uh, a company that put out absolutely no other games, as far as I know. Um, mostly did productivity software, turned into, and for, is still around, and still is, you know, seems to be doing well. Uh, makes high-end studio, audio studio kind of stuff that you would find in, like, I don't know, Clive Davis's studio or something. Um, they're called Motu. Uh, there is no evidence they were ever called Mark of the Unicorn anywhere on their website. Um, and uh, I tweeted them asking if they knew where the designer of this game was, whose name I forget at the moment. Uh, I did not get a response. Um, all right. So, as you can see, more good game design, right? Green turns to red, turns to purple, turns to blue, turns to green. Um, any of them could have been repeated twice there, but because we're trying to turn to green, uh, that makes sense. We can save it. We can... I'm not hearing any sound to begin with. Uh, hopefully there will be. I do recall there being sound of some kind. Uh, is it on mute? There we go. That's the stuff. Um, bloop. These are not impressive Amiga sounds, I gotta say. Um... The Amiga, the Amiga sound chip is is uh, quite a bit uh, more than 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 this might um, give you the sense of. But okay, so as you can see, I'm turning the sides of them black because they're all the purple ones are in the island are connected. So you have to hit them all, and that's a lot of where the sort of depth of this game comes from. 
I'm only hearing this through the left. Um, whatever. Whatever. So yeah, very ironic for a company that went on to doing uh, all this audio stuff that this game, everything about it, really like. Except that I'm hearing the just bloops through one ear. Um, maybe I will put on some music and uh, mute this. Or at least put on some music. Um, let's see. How can I do that? Uh, I'll find something ambient and appropriate. Not, uh, not, not Andy Fairweather low as much as I was enjoying that. Uh, this is pretty much just things that are not on Spotify. Um, so, so it's limited, so but let's... Uh, do that. All right. This will fit. Um, continue. Oh, right. So offering random flip ray. Uh, I think that means it lasts two turns and it will cost me 15 energy. I should have read up on this in the instructions, but I'm pretty sure this is essentially my hit points, right? Every time I jump, eh, I should have been more efficient. Uh, that might be why I'm at 312, and my capacity is 726. Um, that's a little loud. Uh, Lambs Casino. You know, I can pull that up here. Okay. That seems... That seems fine. But again, if anyone is actually watching this, um, feel free to say anything in the chat, but especially that I have no questions about the game and comments about the audio. Um, so I can, there's no reason for me not to take this because all these slots are empty. But right, this is my energy slash, I believe, basically hit points. Um, I declined offer. Yeah, the UI isn't, Perfect. Uh, oh well. So here's the dodo. Um, all right. So a few things I learned in the five or ten minutes to play this were, you know, don't just try to get everything green right away. Um, it's in fact best right because then if he steps on it being green, uh, it will just go back to red, which is the furthest away from green. Um, and I don't like that. So, instead... Yeah, I don't think he's really putting his all into this. Um, Alright, what you want to do is get everything... Nothing green. Oh, well, see, except... Oh, why did I do that? Because I'm a dope. Um, My energy is going up. I don't understand this. I'm gonna click help. I'm curious as to what it will tell me. I have not. I did not try this last time. Um. I don't know what that does. Oh, it's just taking my turns for me. Okay. I, do I trust that you know what you're doing? Why do I keep... Why did I do that? My energy is going up, but my cap capacity... Okay, is going down. Well, I could have done that much better. Okay, I did win. I need to look at the instructions. I'm confused about things. Okay, I do want... I see. it. The blue... Okay, the thing that's highlighted. So, decline offer starts highlighted. Take that. Fantastic. Um, I want to see just exactly how this... No, what? Well, guess not. 
Uh, come on. There we go. Uh, where did I even... I had the instructions open. Here we go. I'm just going to bring them up into the phantom zone. So leave this on. All right. I did not mean to do that, but try my bit. Uh, so, what we got here. All right, but I'm going to have to do that if I want to access this. So, Manawa is a jellyfish of considerable size and intelligence. First, she had trouble getting around on dry land, but this con problem can be overcome with persistence and power. She uses this power with stunning effect as she floats over the hex arena. Who, who did this game? I like them, they're charming. Uh, bow mark of the unicorn. Uh, do they just not give credit to a designer? Rude. Yeah, I saw it online, I guess. Um, lose all your capacity and then lose the game. In for, there are only three ways to eliminate a saved game. However, saving the level causes you to lose ground. Ooh. Interesting. That is a weird game design decision. I mean, but yeah, saving is an actual mechanic. Um, I want clone. Where's clone? Okay, help. Please, five turns for you. Use it if you're confused about your goals or you want to learn good tactics. That's nice. See, this is a very accessible game. And I remember just... Yeah, this felt very forward-thinking. Um, you receive one point of energy for each green hex in the arena every turn. Very Euro game. You also get one-eighth of the energy expended by your opponents each time they cast a spell. You win a large bonus of magical energy when you win a level. Oh! So you can lose... I thought you just died if you lost a level. Um, or they just made you do it over. But I think I, you just... Or I figured you could save scum it, I think. I think I thought my assumption was... You just died, but, you know, you can save scum. But, in fact, you do no you cannot save scum because it, it will eliminate your save. It, it works on roguelike rolls where it just goes in on the disc or whatever. Um, and saving is just a literally, you know, a long pause uh, where you can turn the machine off or whatever. Um, but you can lose a level and then your capacity drops by 400. And you learn a little, lose a little capacity. Yeah, I definitely have to do this as a key game. It's just too weird. It's just too interesting a system to not um, give at least a... Yeah, and, and the marketing unicorn thing is cute. I won't have too much to say. And, and right, the fact that the help spell, that's... Uh, yeah, just, just definitely one I'll give five minutes. And then uh, if someone falls in love with it in lab... Fantastic. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yep, that is, okay. Um, right. So I don't, well, okay, but see if I turn that, well, it does connect those two sides at least, right? So that's good. Um,. Nice, but I think I want to... Okay. I think I got this. Speed 2, flip 2. Don't understand what that means. Okay, I think, yeah, basically this is... It just occurred to me that the company is called Mark of the Unicorn and you're a unicorn. I wonder how it that was nine percent chance that's the game designer just being, you know, nice to the company that was already named. But it would be very funny if like this was their you know, this was their meal ticket in this game. Um 
it's very good. You know? I mean, just on that level of, like, uh, creating situations. I don't quite know what speed to... Okay. Speed lets you make several moves in one turn. Uh, when combined with other components, speed allows you to perform them all um, repeatedly during a turn. Oh, jump three? Yeah, hell yeah. Okay. And yeah, like, I haven't even used the spells yet, except for help. Uh, for example, speed three, jump two, flip two allows you to move two hexes and double flip the hex you land on three times in a single turn. Okay, so speed two, flip two. So there, there's actually kind of like lightly procedurally generated um, spells here, kind of like key forge or something. Okay, so speed two, flip two means I will, I will go to a space and double flip that hex, and then I will do it again, and then my opponent will move. Um, crazy. Uh, speaking of my opponent, Fitzroy is a Triceratops from the time of the Great Mesozoic Extinction. In reality, the majority of the dinosaurs did not die out, they departed for other dimensions. Yeah. Because of the time distortion involved in dimension travel, Fitzroy is still a baby after 65 million years, but he has quite a stomp. Good going, Fitzroy. Um, all right. Back to business. Uh, and jump three, just literally... Yeah, I mean, I guess I'll I'll start using the spells when I start needing the spells. They do cost energy. Um, and that seems like a natural progression. All right. So he wins if this all turns purple. Um, that ain't happening. No, this is... But one thing... Okay, like, this is just good game design. This is just good game design. Because even on the easiest, dopiest level, there's still an advantage to doing it better, right? This is one problem a lot of roguelikes have. Um, like... Meteor Fall, I don't know, uh, Dream Quest, uh, I'm thinking of the deck building ones because I've been playing the Switch Slay the Spire, but, um, but just in general, it's like, especially games where you, you heal up to full health when you level up or whatever, um, yeah, if you play Meteor Fall, which is, like, a very nice little iOS, uh, Tinder Reigns controlled, uh, deck building roguelike, where you just, yeah, you flick left to not play the card and regain stamina, or you flip right to play the card. You can just flick right through the first level or two uh, and just not think that whatsoever, because, you know, maybe you'll take some hits, uh, but you're, you're going to heal up. and you know, But, like, yeah, in this game, I do get the feeling, like, even that very first level, they're going to do a little proc gen, so it's not always the exact same pattern, of course. Um, and then if you can... If you're a little better at the game, you have a little more energy for the later levels, and it all adds into the same pool. So, yeah, very interesting um, game design. Just a sec. Things are happening with the cats. I just want to check on that. Okay. <laughs> What's up? Clancy's just looking at me from one of his many, many beds. Because um, he there is as spoiled as you can be while having to live in a studio apartment for your entire life. Um, it's the it's the devil's bargain they made. Um, Alright. Oh, a mushroom. Amy is not your average sentient mushroom. Again, just good copywriting. Uh, she grew up as an orphan. Oh! In the city of Mascara, uh, yeah, spelled Mascara, surviving by her wits and magic. Uh, she relies primarily on illusions and defensive spells. Without even trying to see through her own illusions, she can outmaneuver most challengers. What does that mean? Without even trying to see through her own illusions, she can outmaneuver most challengers. That's deep. Um, I will not try to see through my own illusions. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, but yeah, there are illusion spells. Uh, I guess we'll deal with that when we deal with it. I 
Why do you keep hopping on that one space? Fibble. Ah. <laughs> I don't know if you uh, I briefly glimpsed him in the camera there. Um, things sure what was that wait what's going on uh, do I not believe this is true I feel like something happened that I should not trust What is up with you? Like, you should be trying to turn those... Uh, have I won? Where were your illusions? Where are your illusions now? What's your name? Iris or something? Something oddly normal? Uh, even Amy. <laughs> Iris is exotic compared to fucking Amy. Um... All right, what do we got now? Oh, wait. Ooh, I got a new spell. Yeah, see, this game, I wonder if, I, I, well, I guess you can save it still. Um, it'd be nice if it ramped up a little. If there was an option to skip levels, like Populous, um, the better you do. I mean, not that I think I'm doing great, um, but I wonder about that. All right, Raz. Oh, so they're coming in the order in the manual. Uh, so I can even know who's coming up, but I won't look. Uh, Braz is the crown prince of Mayfair. Like many of the proper nobility, he spends most of his time involved in sports. Due to his easy life, he has had a lot of time to practice hex. Each of these characters has, like, a pretty tight little backstory. Uh, like the simpler bees of Earth, he likes to flit hither and yon and play among bright colors. It's a this pretty ominous character design. Um, all right. Unicorn versus B. <laughs> Let's do it. Hmm. I'm gonna ask for help, because I'm not sure if I should go here or right and connect together all these greens. Because uh, he's just gonna turn those red. Uh, or I could connect. Yeah, I'll do that. Because at least then. They haven't really done any spells yet. Okay. I do have to watch out. Purple is the danger zone. Um, okay. Well, you're a little smarter. What happens if I do this? I don't know. Well, I don't really want to flip two. Let's try speed three. One. Two. And three. So really, it'd be nice to... Yeah, you're not... Okay, you're not that bright. I'm not worried. Yep. Probably you need to do that, but that's fine. Look at all my capacity. Uh, or my inter I mean, I guess the weird thing is that you could turtle a little, but then your capacity keeps going down as your energy builds up. I don't know. I wonder if the numbers are even remotely balanced. Okay, so now I can actually own flip. I should actually look this up because I will not automatically take everything. Uh, ooh, and I like who we're going to be meeting next. Um, 
so own flip. What does that mean? Uh, puts the correct number of flips on it to make it your color. Okay. So blue. Because my, I mean green. My color is always green. Uh, you should just call that blue. Um, yeah, I mean, um, I feel like I should keep, yeah, yeah, I'll do that, because I, I, nothing's been costing too much, but, you know. Um, yeah, here we go. This is this is the guy I just saw, Sir Jake. Uh, let's see. I'm just going to take some uh, screenshots and put them on Twitter uh, to promote the Fuchs brand. Uh, there, yeah. Always be branding. Um, always be meowing. I don't know if that's coming through. Uh, let's see here. Oh, yeah. Basically, I just want... My goal with doing this is for it to be successful enough, meaning having 10 people, let's say, come in, and then I will feel obligated to do it, which means that I will be playing the games that I should be playing uh, in terms of becoming, you know, uh, a better uh, teacher of American computer games of the 80s, uh, as opposed to... Um, playing whatever, playing more Slate Aspire or whatever. Um, I don't know what to say, you know. Um, All right, if you want to see any of those uh, descriptions, I just posted them on Twitter. Um, but yeah, this guy, Sir Jake. Sir Jake is proper and upstanding. Wait, where did the game go? Where did the game go? There we go. Uh, Sir Jake is proper and upstanding, but not exactly British. In fact, he's not exactly anything. He's a lot more like nothing at all. Where Jake came from, nothing is much of anything. He feels very comfortable around nothing and tries to keep the arena looking that way. Not sure what that means, but maybe... See, I feel like I'm not getting the full characterizations of these guys because I'm still in tutorial level, and clearly you're going to cycle through these guys because, uh, you know, um, there's 120 levels and there's, I don't know, 12 of these opponents, max. Uh, so, right, they'll start doing their spells and stuff like that. I think there's 11, and one of them is, you know, the god. Uh, so I'm probably not going to face him, you know, just on level 11. Um, all right. I'm going to go get a seltzer, and then I will be back to play more Hex.
right. Still one viewer. A select audience. Um, Dibble. Why don't you come over here and say hi to your, your fan? I'm sure that won't be a problem. Okay. Hello. Yeah, rub against the uh, gooseneck. That, that won't do anything. Um, anyway. Okay. Literally learning this streaming game. Uh, soon I'll figure out how to do a star wipe. Uh, oh, you know what I just realized? Okay, speaking of learning the streaming game, I'm gonna figure out where to put your little dumb face. Um, my dumb face, not yours, of course. That would be a weird feature. Um, there's video capture. Let's unlock that. Let's pop that into the top right corner. So the bottom left, because then you can see all my spells. All my beautiful spells. Right? Yes. Uh, okay. And I can lock that again. And lock all these things. Locking doesn't prevent me from... Okay. Fantastic. Alright. That's a good... Uh, see, this is this is why you do this stuff. Uh, even if you suspect your only viewer is some sort of a semi-sentient virus uh, on the computer. Um, right. So, Mr. Fancy, Sir Jake, uh, you're probably not going to do anything interesting because you haven't we haven't leveled up yet, or gotten to the point where interesting things happen, so let's just try to... Thank you. I mean, his color is purple, so... You have to make sure... But he's not smart, right? He... Oh, well, okay, he's a little smart. But not smart enough. And, yeah, you... Yeah, that's not gonna help you, buddy. Ooh. Well, why would you jump on the same... Maybe I should be using my... Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Another wrinkle, right, is that my strategy, where I'm basically making the whole board blue. See, that's the risk-reward. That's... Right, you want everything green. See, now I'm pumping up the energy and in fact if I can hold out a little bit I might turtle just enough yeah let's do it oh wait but he could cast the oh okay that was close but that okay wheels within wheels in this in this cute little game um I wonder if even using a spell, probably you don't recharge. Shield, color, speed, two. Yeah, what a... You know, that's the thing, is, I mean... Well, I was gonna say, like, you can fit a lot of rules into 64K, but this is not 64K, this is an Amiga. Um, but the point stands, right? That, like, 
there's nothing you don't feel like he left anything out this is this game has plenty going on possibly too much i mean but if too much and at least this kind of like yeah, like, if it's broken, it's going to be fun broken. Okay, shield. Shield keeps you and your opponent from affecting a hex for the duration of the spell. Oh, well, that explains why it lasts for six. Uh, there are three types. Shield movement keep you and your opponent from moving onto a hex. Shield flip prevents this number of sword flips from changing. Shield color prevents it from changing color. I don't quite know what the number... You can't unstore, like, the light dark... Well... Whatever. <laughs> the important thing is that. And then speed two. I don't understand even what that does. But, you know, I'm not going to use help. My own man. Right. All right. Okay. Now we're cooking with propane. Who are you? You look tough. You are Phoebe, one of the seven shield maidens of Artemis. When she is not on duty, she seeks out challenges to hone her skills of mind and body. Hex is just such a challenge. Phoebe is strong, fast, and smart, and her spells were chosen for her by Artemis herself. Beware of Phoebe's renowned bursts of power. Damn. Alright. Let's do this. Um. Well. How about that? So, right. So, the more things I can turn green early... There's, there's definitely different viable strategies here, especially given... Yeah, well... But, like, I do build up a lot of energy by having a lot of green on the board. Having all this purple is a little dangerous. Just realizing... You seem a little smarter. Okay. I'd like to shield that, but I don't think it'd make a difference. You're not that smart. Wait. Neither am I, apparently. Wait, why do we need to do that? Okay, fine. Sure. I feel like this is worth it in terms of the energy. And, well, right, and then I don't have those dumb islands. Okay, let's try this. Flip two. Ba bam! Don't understand what that did. Don't like that at all. I do see I'm good. Uh, I do foresee some worries in terms of knowing what spell. Ooh, the next guy looks. This person is very. Uh... Who's Steven? Okay, invisible scatter. Another spell. Invisible scatter. 
What is going on? There's more than a hundred spells. Sure. Invisible fake. We're scatter though. Okay. Scatter affects a random number of hexes. One in four on the average scattered randomly across the arena. It does not necessarily affect the hex you jump on. Right, because it does seem like every time you cast a spell, you cast a spell and then move somewhere. So, yeah, I, I still don't understand Flip 2. I'm going to refer to that again. Flip 2. I feel like there's going to be later levels where you need to flip things more than once, I guess? Because that does seem to do nothing. Okay. Uh, invisible causes a hex or hexes to disappear. Oh, it's under the heading fake. Allows you to change the appearance of the hex you jump on without actually affecting it at all. The illusion lasts until the hex is jumped on again or until a dispel fake is cast. Okay. So it's invisible to me. Well, I declined it anyway, apparently. But yeah, I think I don't want that because... The computer, I don't feel like... Maybe it gets smarter, and then, like, you can fake it out. Like, that's really interesting, because this is a one-player game, right? Um, so just this idea that uh, you're going to be faking out the computer when it gets... But, but I have to wait for it to get smarter to want to bother. Do you like how I'm building up all this energy? Yeah, why not? I feel like it's worth it. Well, now that's good. Yeah. Fine. What happens if I do that? I don't understand what I just spent energy on. I don't like any of this. I may lose this.
I think that worked, right? Because it would have all turned red, except for the shield on that one. What? Yeah, it's a very confusing game. Nineteen eighty five, too. I mean, this is the year of the I mean, this has to be one of the like ten first games, commercial release games on the Amiga. What the hell is the story behind this? Um Random Flip Big Hex. I wanna go over to some cinema or stuff, but I feel like I'm in too deep. Big hex includes the hex you move on to and all adjacent hexes. Uh, sure. Okay. That I get. Random flip. Yeah, I think I get that too. Uh, I can certainly see that being very useful. More useful than f own flip. Which I just... I mean, I guess own flip works on singletons, basically. Uh, I don't understand the jump. Oh, okay. So, so you move, you you, you hit all the spaces. You only flip the last one. Fine. Um, I mean, those are both useful. Yeah, I guess I'll just replace. What do we got now? Very strange game. Um, Mr. Rhino. Uh, oh, right, Fitzroy. We met you before. You're still quite a. You're still a baby. Still a baby after 65 million years. That's right. But hopefully this time you've got some spells. Um, anyway, we have not met the Icelandic elf yet. I thought that was who would be next because that was listen well, the manual next. But no. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is all interesting. Yeah, eat it. What are you into that? Uh, let's jump. Jump, jump. Try this. Yeah, it worked. Okay. I'm using up a lot of mana, but I do get one for each. So right now I'm getting three, six, nine, eleven per turn or something, so I can afford it. Let's just go here. Because, yeah, that's going to turn. Um, hmm. Oof. Yeah, let's do this. don't understand. I don't want to actually show up that. Hmm. 
Am I getting... Well, if I get speed 2 for 6 turns, that's crazy. It's crazy good. Don't necessarily know the way this works. It's a powerful spell, but it does cost 120. Flip to no. Well, flip two versus own flip. Yeah, let's go for it. Yeah, gotta stop spending so big. Like, for instance, that's a good flip, too. No, it is not. I thought it would... Hmm. Mushroom. Amy. Illusions. Gotta watch out for your illusions. Is that an illusion? I can't tell what you're doing. Thanks. Right. Okay. I see. Right. No! <sighs> Dumb. This could be fucking myself over, but... Like building up energy. Nice. Oh, what do I get next? See, I'm gonna I gotta find out my next exciting spell. Speed two, flip two. Yeah, I just find the flip two confusing and useless. So no, thank you. But, I'm going to save, because as the manual says, you want to save at the beginning of a level. That is not what I meant to do, but thank you. Alright, Smedley is saved. I'm only a little behind Doug. sound on. Alright. What a tremendously impressive game. Just, you know, I mean, obviously not perfect. I do wonder about the balance. I do, we'll see how it goes. I mean, I'm on level 11 of 120. Um, and maybe it just gets too chaotic, but it seems very clever, and boy... Yeah, a lot of neat stuff going on for something uh, from the year the Amiga came out. All right. What else do we got going here? 
Um, da, 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 da. Let's play a little, I should play a little Defender of the Crown, because uh, I think that's going to be one I play tomorrow. Um, they all sin aware, so not a great game as I recall, and as people say, but a very important one. And you know, I'll have my fun with it. Um, all right, why do I even bother doing that? There's no way to actually drag things in on the uh, uh, Amiga thing. There we go. Oh, right. Probably a good idea to have disc 202, because I got one of these fancy Amigas with the two... Uh, all right. Why do I have... Uh-oh. Can I not do slow ROM? And why is start not working now? Hmm. Hmm. Weird. Quit it. Well, that's the launcher. Okay, well, maybe that was the ROM. Uh, die. Okay. I don't even understand what arcade is. And I don't really want the slow RAM. There we go. Default. Okay, let's just do that. Yeah, as any layers go, I find this one rather more confusing. But. I guess I could do save state here. Uh, for a hex, but it seemed like it actually. We had Jesse from last time. I think that was me. One would assume. There we go. This game is basically an excuse for art, so. And some fancy music. Uh, right. So, one thing that'd be good, though, is to actually have the manual open. Thing about uh, these old computer games. You actually want to look at the manual. Alright, Defender of the Crown. Uh, God, there's so many stories behind all this. Orchestration by Bill Williams makes perfect sense. Uh, Bill Williams, a legend, made Alley Cat. A fascinating figure in a lot of ways. Uh, I wonder, yeah, I don't know if the viewer is still out there. Feel free to let me know if, uh, you know, the mixing. Uh, my main concern is the mixing. Software piracy is a crime. Pass the word, not the disc. Yeah, Robert and Phyllis Jacobs, uh, Jacob 
uh, started Cinemaware. Uh, he was, I think, a movie agent, as I recall. But yeah, I mean, like, they're all pulp. They're all genre movie games. And one interesting thing about them is that, you know, we tend to have games in essentially mechanical genres. And most of these games are weird mishmashes, some more successful than others, of uh, kind of like Sid Meier's Pirates is also this way, where it is very much uh, driven by the content, right? Driven by the genre that it's uh, thematically emulating as opposed to um, like the genre that is mechanically a part of. So yeah, Defender of the Crown, as I recall, is like a mix of action mini games, kind of a simple strategy game, some choose your own adventure stuff. Um, but yeah, what do we got? It is a time for legends. Uh, the king is dead, the throne vacant, Britain enters a season of destruction. So, you know, kind of classic. Uh, six great lords will fire for the throne in the south of the three Norman castles to the north of the homes of the three Saxons. If a Saxon lord captures everyone, the Norman fortresses, he will win the throne. Reading the map, army building, uh, some history. Yeah, there's always, you know, like definitely they they like their subject and they always, uh, yeah, designer notes. Uh, medieval Britain was a crucible of heroes. Uh, here, I'll might as well bring this down if I'm going to. Um, let's, yeah, and I mean, very much like Sid Meier's Pirates, where it's like you pick a genre and then like the first five things you as a total ignoramus think of become, you know, the core of your game. Like, well, you, there's swashbuckling and you, you, you ride around in boats and you, you romance uh, the governor's daughter and you find gold. Boom. There you go. Uh, so, yeah, here you got knights and castles, jousting, damsels in distress. Um, and they put, you know, doing some historical stuff here. Uh, yeah, Jim Sachs. So Jim Sachs was a um, Amiga artist who was just like basically did the first really cool looking pictures that you could find on the quote unquote internet or whatever you'd even call it at that point bbs is right um right the amiga definitely you got in 1985 when it came out not a terribly successful machine at first never really becomes too successful in america though it ends up doing very well in europe but you do like you can see digitized photographs you know like oh yeah this looks like, these look nice. These look fine. Um, and that you could go on a BBS with your 1200 baud modem and spend, you know, 45 minutes downloading, like, this picture of, like, a lady, you know, looking uh, at you uh, or whatever, or a Porsche or whatever 80s things they would have. Um, yeah, it's pretty remarkable. And, yeah, Jim, so, but Jim Sachs did some of the first uh drawn right like iconic pieces of art that people download in the amiga he ends up hooking up with cinemaware uh draws a tremendous amount of awesome art they basically try to make a game out of it apparently the commodore 64 version of this is actually more playable as a game uh because you know they had to port it to a system um and make it an actual game instead of just a proscenium for cool graphics and sound uh but yeah there's jousting uh, I'll figure all this out. There's tactics. Uh, yeah, let's let's figure this out as we go along. All right. Put that up there. First up, uh, let's pick our guy. Who are we going to be? Um, Wilfred of Ivanhoe. Good, good average. Average, average, strong. I recall the sword play being important and difficult. <laughs> and his name is Jeffrey Longsword, so clearly he's got his, he's got what he's good at. Um, sure. Leadership average. We'll see how that pays out. All right, maybe I'll just. Ah, our old friend Robin of Loxley. Uh, the married men, etc., etc. Uh, disastrous news for Charles Reunion, the assassins in the king's life. Oh, this is like the king's life. Normans are assembling armies. Saxons will fight them. Uh, men like you, only you can say. Oh, so Robin Hood is basically saying, I'm. Ooh, pledges his aid three times. Alright. 
Here we are, Jeffrey Longsword. My income is two. My treasure is nine. It is October 1149. What do you want me to do? Okay, I assume I'm the horse. Read map. Let's, let's, that seems like the least consequential thing. Okay, here we go. Uh, owned by me, two gold a month, zero vassals. Continue. Oh. Let's read some more map. Light, Leicester? Louster? I don't know. Not owned, two gold a month, ten vassals. So yeah, this is like basic risk kind of stuff. Like the board game risk. Uh, Wolfric the Wild 3. He, why does he have more money than me? We're both average leaders. Uh, so this is a territory that I border, but, well, you've you've got a connection there. Yeah, there's not a territory that, well, is that just Sherwood Forest? Yeah, you're not going to let me click on that. Uh, Twelve vassals. Yorkshire. They make pudding. Lincolnshire. Three gold and twelve vassals. Well, I like you the best. And you're only connected a little bit there, so how much... Okay. Uh, alright. Seek conquest or go raiding. Or build army. But I don't feel like I have enough of an army. Okay. Um, read the map. Sure. Did that. Um, I don't know. Do I raid or do I conquer? Um, let's find out. If you wish to seek his help in this campaign, go to Sherwood before matching, marching on any territories. Uh, this is... Well, yeah, the men of Sherwood will join your ranks and will be a formidable indeed. But in a campaign, do they mean the whole game? Or do they just mean... Well, let's... let's I don't want to conquer Sherwood Forest. I just want to go to Sherwood Forest. Do I raid it? Okay, no, I don't want to raid a castle. This is a very confusing game, but, you know. Okay, excellent. Thank you. You can see how wow everyone would have been by this. I hope you can hear the authentic Amiga drive grinding sounds that I don't think there's any way to turn off that I have found in this. Uh... Okay, I'm just raiding someone's castle. Well, how about that guy? Because then I'll... But how do I reach it? I'm going through enemy or unowned territory. I don't understand. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, is this a minigame? Oh, this is not going to go well. Um, oh boy. Oh, I am Jeffrey Longsword. And, uh, yeah, mouse driven. Oh, God. Go, Jeffrey. Go, Jeffrey. Uh, let's retreat. Get him. Get him. Get him. Back. I don't know. Are we all Jeffrey Longsword? Go. Okay, other Jeffries, the decoys can hold them off. Hello. Do I? There's no high or low, even. These shadows are pretty dope. That's nice. That's a nice effect. Am I being too aggressive? Am I just clicking a bunch? Oh, okay, again. Not... Unlike Hex, which doesn't look like much, but Vince's great thoughtful game design, I feel like this is just me clicking a bunch. Come on. Okay. I did it. What am I doing? Okay. What's here? Gold? An incredible... Yes! Gold! Ah, beautiful gold. Sweet, sweet, sweet lucre. Uh, an incredible sight meets my eyes. Yes. And all I did was killing some people or just 
Banging out. Everyone but me took over territory. Well then. Oh, I guess the other Jeffrey Longswords were Robin's men? I don't know. But I'm really good at this game, so I'm not going to worry about it. Um, so much treasure. Build army. Uh, let's get... One knight. Uh, even 20 soldiers. Now, we're going to seek some conquest. Right, I'm not going to send everyone. So that'd be crazy. I'm going to send 10 people and my knight. Send forth the okay. See, everyone's got more territory than me now. I don't like that. But there's... But I did steal a bunch of my from that guy. Hey! 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 Hmm. Yeah. Not for long, buddy. All right, Edmund. You look weak. Uh. Sorry, buddy. Oh, yeah. No, ignore her cries. It's a good game. You're gonna, what do you want me to do? I mean, maybe there's some strategic... Uh, okay. Uh-oh. Should I have gotten Robin Hood to help me? I kind of... You know, I used one of my three wishes very early. Oh, God. Well, luckily, I am Jeffrey Longsword, and there's no skill to this. No, I still got these other guys. I do... Oh, this is just terrible. This is a terrible game. Pow, pow, pow. I guess that is the sound of swords clashing or something. I gotta look up if there's any... Defender of the Crown of sword fighting strategy. Which I can do as I do the sword fighting. Um, it's that good. Here's the full page of tips for Defender of the Crown. Uh, here's a tip for jousting. Well, I'll come in handy when jousting. Move your lance and toes just left of your opponent's shield, then down a little. I don't know where I'm going to someone's castle. Oh, right. Oh, that Saxon damsel. Uh, at first, the room here. Empty your heart fills with disappointment. To turn to leave a soft voice. Also, from Dark Honor. She is here. Rushing to grab you. She is in your arms. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, this is 1986, isn't it? Oh boy. You might all want to avert your eyes. Well, you know, it'll be very PG. But I, I do believe this was a, a, a selling point in the advertising. A diaphanous, nighty uh, model type thing. <laughs> I, but see, you know, like that, that is past the Uncanny Valley, almost. Uh, I recognize that as a pretty lady. Uh-oh. Oh, dear. <laughs> yeah, this is, this and Hex, man. The yin and yang of Amiga Gaming. Oh, and now she's, uh, now we're married. That's how it works. 
someone kidnapped you and I kidnapped you back, so clearly uh, I'm great and you love me. What is going on? I don't like this game. This is this is someone who heard about a board game. Um and hurt yeah. Okay. Maybe I'll have to play the Commodore version just to get the the well roundedness. Uh maybe I'll hold a tournament. Wait, I did just read a uh, a tip for the jousting. So I will remember that for about three seconds. Uh, after it leaves the screen. Uh, here's a full page of tips. Uh, when jousting move your lands until it's just left your opponent's shield, then down a little. Count the number of bounces, and on the fifth, strike at the lowest possible point. We could try it? I don't know, but red... I don't like red there. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta cut red off. Sorry. Yep. Fine. Bring it on. Um, I, I, oh God. No, wild retreat, wild retreat. Oh, too late. Everyone died but the knight. <laughs> I have a lot of money though. That's the important thing. I can buy more dudes. Uh, well then, uh, let's build army. Definitely want to do that. Um, my home army is actually pretty big. I think I must have gotten vassals or whatnot. Let's get a few knights in there. Now let's just do that. Taking it back. Hopefully. I don't know. That was a very large army. But hopefully, uh, they all left, right? Well, you know, we're going we're gonna to get some help. From our old buddy Robin Hood. But, you know, I can't... Well, I guess... I guess it's... I guess... It just... It, yeah. Do they all marry me? Do, do, is it a conveyor belt? Like, I don't... I'm just so good at sword fighting. I can't not rescue a Saxon lady. I wonder if she'll look exactly like the last Saxon lady. It's not a good game. Wiggle. Wiggle the sword. I want to go back to Hex. No, actually I don't because my brain is tired from playing Hex. Um, and I feel like it's just going to actually... Oh, there's a shooting star. See? It's a lovely... It's a lovely... Demo. Right. And I can... I mean, this is this is classic AAA. This is uh, the Order 1886 of its day. Uh... Whatever you get, you get the you got the computer. You want to show it off to your friends? Definitely get Defender of the Crown. Um, they'll play it for a half hour, and they'll be whack. And then get battle chess and just make all the they don't actually play real chess. Just make all the chess pieces fight each other, and every combination you can figure out. Uh, do I know if I'm doing well? I I'm just clicking. You understand. I'm just kind of moving forward and clicking. Okay. I think it's time for that full page of tips. But, you know... 
I keep making it to that castle's inner sanctum, baby. <sighs> okay, the treacherous Normans. Yep. I'm a friend. News my daring rescue. New respect. That's all good. Um, Rosalind is still my lady, so I don't have to worry about uh, any court intrigue. So I guess I guess the the first woman you rescue just is automatically your wife. And after that, and I don't know what it means that I see her there. It seems fine. Well, red. Clearly, we should all ally against red. Uh, but maybe it's time to hold a tournament. Don't know. This is probably going to be a disastrous choice, but honestly, if I die, I'm fine with that. And come on. Look at that. Look at that. Look at this. This looks great. Let's see? This also looks... I mean, these are all just these great Jim Sacks little pictures, little light animation, little things blowing in the wind. Very nice. And the cats are talking about. Select my opponent. Who is the worst? Um, Falcon Bridge is the guy who's taking over everything. Oh, land. Definitely land. This is gonna be a disaster. I should not have done this. Okay. Uh, what was the advice again? Uh, move your lands until it's just left of your opponent's shield, then down a little. Count the number of bounces on the fifth strike. Strike at the lowest possible point. I think I did it! I don't know. He looks blue, and the blue guy fell. I guess we'll find out. Is that me? I guess so! Hot damn! You suck. Let's, okay, this time let's just do it for some fame. <laughs> can, I, can I just beat up on the same dude over and over? That seems... weird. Left, and then down a little. One, two, three... Go low, go low, go low. Oh, that did not work. Well, better fame. Better to lose the fame and gain the land. Um, okay. Hey! 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 What's going on? My treasure is 27. My leadership has gone up. I started as an average leader. And now I am good. Um, this is a dumb game. Okay. Uh, I got money. Let's get a catapult for home. And a knight. That seems useful. Um, then, then let's, uh, conquer some damn territory here. Oh, boy. I should not have done that. Am I gonna... Wild retreat, probably. Wild retreat. That's interesting. That is a real-time bit of the game. Um, oh, well, there goes, uh, Edmund the Grim. I mean, I'll say this, it's not easy, right? It's not trivial. I, I believe that once you figure it out, you figure it out, and you can pretty much beat it at will. Um, all right, I guess we fight to the end. Uh, maybe my only chance is to just whack him over. Yeah, he's got three... But I'm such a good sword fighter. All right, let's do this. I'm 
looking up sword fighting tips. Well, sword fighting. <laughs> well, this is amusing. Uh, someone posted, 2008. Uh, I hated jousting, especially since the computer could call for a joust uh, tournament you had to participate. I never won and would lose a little fame since I never joust for land knowing I would just lose it. The one way to get around, I suppose, was to call for a jousting tournament at the beginning of the game, then aim for the horse. You get all your land stripped away, which doesn't mean anything because you don't have any at that point, and are barred from jousting for the rest of the game. So, if you don't like the jousting, aim for the horse. Just call a tournament first thing. Let's see. Uh, oh no. I sure. Oh, fine. This is terrible. I don't understand. Just, just, just... Well... Ugh. What's up, Rosalind? Uh, you backed a loser. Sorry, sorry, babe. Um, I don't know. All of it's terrible. Uh, send forth the campaign army. Fair. I guess you can just take over stuff until they actually figure out where you are, and then you just run away. Um, there's that little wee castle. Uh, I have enough for a catapult. I have two catapults. Well, I can. Yeah, just do it. Um, well, I'm not... Okay, right. That That's what I meant to do. Build the campaign army. Get some catapults in there. Wow. They all died. Uh, I don't need an army at home. Please, uh, I'll just leave one guy. <laughs> Let's do it. Oh. Yeah, this is really the story of Red that I am a supporting player in. What? No! It's a good picture, though. Well, that... What, what was I supposed to do about that? Hmm. Oh, poor Jeffrey Longsword. Longsword can't solve everything, apparently. Good water effect. I... I give up. Let's just die. Yeah. We're gonna fight. We're gonna fight. We're gonna fight fiercely, and we're gonna, we're gonna win against incredible odds. Ferocious! Ferocious attack! Oh, we have a chance. Kind of. We have all these knights! Come on, knights! Come on, yes! Yes! Dun dun dun! Probably a Pyrrhic victory. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. That was orange. That was orange making his last gasp. Uh, yeah, we're... Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Well, my one guy at home should. I do have a lot of money. How do I just give up? Not going out without a fight. 
spend it all. Well, almost all. Um, yeah, sure, I'll hold a tournament. What? It costs money? Hmm. I thought they just kind of happen. Uh. What happened? Okay. I want to try something. I'm going to spend it all, right? So now I have no money. So now there's no risk in taking over a castle. Of raiding a castle because if they capture me I have no way to pay them back so they'll just uh, have to let me go I'm pretty sure that's the chivalric thing to do if your uh, opponent who just slaughtered all your land try to take your money is captured and has no money all right Jeffrey right clicking Retreat! Ha ha! That was a fake. Can I wait for the other guys to come with me? Can I help them? Can I? I can't back up. No, no. I don't know what uh, uh, are they. They are just for show. Again, good shadow. Very, very cinematic, as befits Cinnaware. This is incredibly charming, and it's incredibly stupid by, uh, it's really naive art. I mean, you know, there were actual, we just saw Hex, there, there were actual good games in 1986. Um, this is just not one of them, this is just, this is the first game by a company that's really excited about the graphics and sound and, again, cinematic capacities. Not game designers, really. Bill Williams is, but he's just the sound guy. And, uh, in his game, Sinbad, maybe I'll just go over to that. Uh, that's a hot mess as far as I know, but at least an interesting one. Gold! Hooray! But yeah, I mean... Yeah, I saw that coming. I just... Well, I want to see... I want to see what happens when I... die. Um, it's still pretty green for November. Like, what am I supposed to do? Like, I've clearly lost. This is just me. Well, I guess... I could build another castle. <laughs> Don't know how that helps. Probably not. Probably didn't. Spend it all. Well, old tournament. It costs a uh, five or less, apparently. And we get to see. Yeah, like, it is amazing. I mean, this costs probably $40, which in today's money would be somewhere between 80 and 90. 1986? Yeah. Um, can I say 90? Uh, amazing. Aren't some of these people, like, dead by now? I mean, like, some of these people just have no territory anymore. Let's take on Edmund the Grim. Okay. Fair enough. So he's just, he's just hanging out. He's just waiting for tournaments at this point. Um, and maybe he can get a land back from someone if, but he can't, because he has nothing that, you gotta have, you gotta have some stake, I guess. Alright, let's play this terrible minigame. Okay. okay, hit, hit down there. Nope. I think I had beginner's luck that first time. My deeds will be remembered. I should have gone for the horse. I forgot to go for the horse. 
Oh, they take all your land if you go for the horse. That'd be... That's how I'm ending this thing. Yes. I mean, yeah, yeah. The, the inevitable is occurring. I'm going out. I'm not, I'm not going out without taking a horse with me. My income is six. My treasure is six. All right, Rosalind. Cheer me on. Oh. I don't know, man. Sea Conquest. Build the campaign. The non-existent campaign army. Sure. Six guys and a knight. Send them forth. Still got one more favor to ask. Of good old Robin Hood. Deeply... See that coming, did you? They have been, I mean, they've just been doing the, uh, you know, take over territory thing. No one else is calling tournaments or raiding castles, it seems. All right. Suicide by horse. Yes, I do. And the list of Ashby de la Zouche. Alright. So, how do I. Any online tips about hitting the horse? Alright, we're taking out Roger's horse for a minute. We're definitely. <laughs> he may have conquered all of Britain. Uh, that one's got a castle on it. And that one's got a castle on it. So, either way, this game's ending. Should I just try to win? No, because even if I take his castle, it doesn't matter. Even if I take his castle, he's got ten other castles. No. You know what he loves? He doesn't care about his castles. He loves his horse. And it would be nice if there was a countdown instead of it just going from loading screen to... Alright, alright, alright. Yeah. Come on, come on. I didn't, I didn't even manage to hit his horse. Yeah, that's not true. My, well, my deeds will be remembered and that I aimed for his horse and lost my castle. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Let's just go. What? Why did I have 23 knights? Is that a glitch? Can I just give up? Can I just lose? I'm fine with just losing. Let me die. Please, Rosalind. You should go. Go, go, get yourself captured or something. Just, you're 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 back in a a, a literal losing horse. Um. I don't know. I don't want to do anything. I got nothing. I got nothing. Send these guys out. Send them forth. Die. All right, I do want to see the end screen, though. I want to find out. I'm building a castle. Uh... 
I have returned home. I'm taking my catapult. I'm taking. Did I just lose soldiers just walking around? I think so. And we're taking over this castle. Yes! Siege! The final mini game. I guess. I don't know. Alright, I got my one catapult. I'm sure this is gonna go great. There it is. Let's throw some rocks. Hey, that's the stuff. That's the stuff. A little low. A little high. A little low. A little high. Tricky. There we go. Well, I annoyed them. I think that's the important thing. Let's just be ferocious. Let's do it and be legends. Uh, we are not legends. Yeah. <laughs> just come on, Red. Uh, just let me die. I refuse to quit. I want to see the quit screen. I, or, I, interesting, I, I just noticed that the map actually does change as you build the castles. So that's neat. So this isn't, it's not just a screen. Um, why would anyone join my army is my question. The fatality rate is uh, not good. Fair. Still got my catapult. <laughs> I think I I mean this is the mini game that actually I feel like I have the most control over, so um yeah, a relative success in that there's some some cause and effect. How about that? That's way short. How about that? That's the stuff. One pixel. No, not too many pixels. How about that? One. That's the stuff. That's the stuff. One pixel at a time. My four dudes. We're gonna. Oh yeah. Ah, right. I forgot. You actually have to be able to beat the people in there. <laughs> yeah. Just again. My my point. Oh come on now. Just wipe me out. Just. I mean, this is the this is the proper experience. No, I suppose quitting as soon as no. I want to. I want to see. I want to see. I want to see Jeffrey Longsword get fucking beheaded, as he very much deserves. Let's build my army. <laughs> Just two guys and a catapult. Uh, sure. Yeah. I feel like I'm being toyed with by, uh, what's his name? Roger. Can I just pass? All right, death by horse. Let's try it again. Death by horse. I'm already tired of this. I mean, it looks great, but still. 
Why would anyone listen to me? Roger Falconbridge. <laughs> you don't just take my land. Yeah, go for it, man. Pretty sure we know who's the king of. Can I just hang out with Robin Hood? Thibble, Thibble, come to me in my hour of need. Thibble, I'm a very bad Norman Saxon, whatever. I'm, I'm just not good at this. This is not good, and I'm not good at it. Sure. I, I, I don't care anymore. Uh, oh no. That's right, the catapult game. Just let me die. Not you, the ball. You're the real star now. I don't care anymore. Let's just try to hit some dudes. Like, my three guys really don't actually want to make it through, believe it or not. Nah. <laughs> Into the water. Yep. Come on, just pull the trigger. Pull the strings. Pull the strings. My leadership has been proven to not be good. I think we can... Uh... Is this a joke? Come on. Fine. Let's get, let's leave the catapult at home. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I'm sending you to your death. I don't think you understand. I don't think you understand. What, yeah, Jesus. <laughs> that's naughty. They should just join it. They should just join the other army. I think that if you got 260 guys, and then, yeah, I bet it is. Finally, finally put me to bed. Come on. Yep. Yeah, I have no doubt that uh, his 85 catapults could manage that. And that my standing army of one guy, maybe? Nope, nobody. Don't. There's no one to have that. There's no one there. It is an empty castle. <laughs> there's nothing there. 
The last battle. Oh, this is what I get? I wanted to join Robin Hood like an hour ago. You fuckers. Goddamn fuckers. Oh, this is cool music now. Alright, the bolt. Time to say goodnight. Well, that was edifying. This is a terrible game. I kind of, I'd read about it. It had been 30 years since I'd really played it for one five minutes. Uh, just making sure the discs worked. Uh, and uh, I, uh, I told my class through, through my secondhand knowledge that, it, you know, not a great game. Uh, basically, art assets turned into some sort of collection of bad mini games and sort of a clunky strategy game that, you know. And yeah, uh, I wasn't wrong to trust those people who told me that. Uh, but now I can talk about it in more specifics. Um, anyway, uh, whoever's been watching this, I don't know. I have no idea. I, the number has been fluctuating between one and four. Uh, the chat is still just me saying test. I'll try that again, make sure. Hey, there we go. Um, but uh, thank you, uh, whatever... Uh, your motivations are for watching this as long as they're not malign, I guess. Uh, I'm not sure what you would use this for. Recreating me and sending me as a cyber assassin? I don't know. Anyway, uh, the important thing is that this is a cute little kitty cat. This is a cute little kitty cat. Look at this cute little kitty cat. Ah. Maybe I'll just do this on stream. That'd be great. Like, if you, this is the moment when the viewer number is just, you know, in, in a way that could never happen in the real world, because uh, cause and effect doesn't work that way. But in the movie, the viewer numbers, as soon as they start paying the little kitty cat, now it's like 30, 40, 5,000. And I have, uh, I've doomed him to internet fame. Um, and then he goes mad with power, as you can see. What a geeky. All right. Time to call it, but uh, I think I'm going to be on tomorrow on the Canon Rent stream uh, doing Amiga stuff. Because, as I said a while ago, I'm doing this basically uh, to prep for my fall class on 80s games. Um, and uh, this has been helpful. Even if even if the viewers are absolute phantoms, the, the very act of doing this keeps me focused, keeps me talking about what I'm experiencing in a way that I will remember uh, and will help me in my pedagogy, as uh, Ian Bogos hates when people say. So I'll say it again. Pedagogy. All right. Good night, all.